When you see me looking to the side, it is because I'm reading. Yo, welcome to Beards and Bars. Your place for rapid fire hip hop discussion and of course, great beer. I am Kamal Kiddo. OT the Golden Child. Thank y'all for checking out our last episode. Uh, you know what time it is, man. We back with a new episode. Make sure if this is your first time listening, you are subscribing. Thank you to the longtime listeners, whether you are checking us mainly on spot uh the spotify in the, in the uh in the uh all the what is it spotify apple any podcast joints are like mm-hmm. popping a little right now you know uh yeah. people can seem to have strayed away from the youtube youtube nobody nobody watch our faces on youtube that much man they need to start watching our faces <laughs> on youtube man yeah man because we got a new situation here we will be doing some live episodes coming up pretty soon man yeah, um, yeah new new recording process and all that but um yeah man uh once again thank you to people who've been checking for us if this is your first time this is beer and rap we like to talk about rap and things within the culture over a good beer uh subscribe uh to, to us and like comment interact with us man shout out to the 30 something 40 something plus comments that was popping on ig the other day about the kendrick album which is what today we would be oh, yeah. talking about so yeah yeah, man. Come on. What are we? It's obvious what we're here for, right? We here for one thing and one thing only. Let's get busy. We talking about Kendrick Lamar's uh, official fifth. Is this fifth? Uh, apparently, through I mean, in the uh, ethos, as far as the ethos called Wikipedia, this is the fifth official album of Kendrick Lamar. There uh, we go. Yeah, uh, Kendrick Lamar's fifth album, uh, Mister Morale and the Big Steppers. Yeah, man, big stepping out here. Um, has already breaking records on Spotify. Is getting um five star ratings already. It just dropped a few days ago. Yes. Um, the hip hop world and and the world in general, there's a few people, um, a few entities that was waiting on this album from Kendrick. We gonna get into our thoughts about uh his latest album, um. Before we do, though, what are we drinking? I am low. I am very low on beer. Every once in a while, I get very low. Uh, unintentionally and intentionally sometimes. I just didn't. I usually rack up on pay weeks, and I did not this week because this weekend was super duper crazy. But um, I was visiting some friends yesterday, and while we were there, um, my wife and my homie, my well, her best friend, really, one of her best friends, they went to the store. And uh, because we was about to start drinking, about to get it popping a little. So I was like, hey, if you see Tavern Cut um, at the store, go ahead and grab that. So my wife did see that. And I'm having Tavern Cut. Um, You know, I'll have something different next week. I'm sorry. This is a repeat of Hot Butcher. Uh, I didn't like the last beer I had for for the first time ever last week. I didn't like uh, Roll Your Way. But this is one of the this is one of their classics man uh when tavern cut uh, come out i feel like everybody be copping this joint everybody is excited about this one and another one they dropped the double blazed orange joint too which Mm -hmm. does very well i believe but this is tavern cut this is a citra and vic secret hop double ipa from hot butcher um uh, a couple of tasting notes on the back here um they say sweet orange pulp yeah uh floral grapefruit but i definitely agree with this one ripe tropical a hundred percent sure. Um, tropical notes, very ripe on this joint, man. Let me go ahead and pour this bad boy up so you can see what's popping here. This is a classic that they are. This is this type of beer here is what really got them. You know what? What you probably would know Hot Butcher for. You know the the big hazies and whatnot. As mm-hmm. you know, I'm Mister uh, Basic Bitch IPA guy with this terrible pour. Are we all up on the screen today? Look at us. I I, I was trying to pull. We are looking right, right. We are looking a little different. You know what I'm saying? We got a got a new uh, streaming situation, man. We trying to we moving up a little bit, man. We trying some things, man. Yeah, but big tropical notes on the nose, man. I mean, just like uh, when I saw, I follow Hot Butcher. When I see that they drop this, it's a couple beers they drop. One of them is this. Uh, double grid is another one, and then a couple other ones. When they drop them, I'm buying them. Like I'm gonna get it. So, what's the ABV on that? This joint is a uh, seven and a half percent, man. One of my favorite beers from them, man. Just a big dumbass hazy, man. Big, big flavors everywhere. Tropical nose busting on the on the nose and the um the palate and whatnot. So, True. what you got, man? What you doing, man? I'm doing um something basic as well, man. I've had this on the show before. Um, I just grabbed Celery Sour. This is a Celery Goes 
from uh Pipeworks. Um, this is actually uh gold style ale with celery, celery seeds, and salt. Um, uh, I know that sounds weird and it sounds uh very healthy. When I first picked <laughs> this up, I said, Man, this that joint sounds very healthy, and I got it mainly for the fact that it's a goes and the goes is like a sour, a sour situation. You got that when you was at Trader Joe, didn't you? I did, yes, yes. I've had this. I have, I've had this for a while, though. I've had this on the show before. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I was going to try to pair something with Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, but yeah, yeah. I really wasn't sure because this is a uh... like what's a therapy beer, right? Right. What's a therapy <laughs> beer? What's a therapeutic beer, man? I I, I wasn't <laughs> sure where to go with that, so. Cheers, and it's in my my Revolution Brewing uh, Freedom Sour joint. You know what I'm saying? The well, second sour's cup. Let's put it this way: that's one of your favorites. This is one of my favorites, and Kendrick is one of our favorite artists. So I guess we, you know, but if if you're listening right now, this is how this is why you should rock with us if this is your first time. Me and Kamal are very um, what can I? How can I say? We we are husbands and fathers and whatnot. Yeah, uh, we do go shop for beer, but you'll see a lot of our beer choices come from just we be if if I'm at the grocery store, <laughs> at, the, at the grocery but store, but that's what makes us relatable, though. You it know does, it's like, oh, yeah, I know that beer, yeah, because that's it's right. not you like go I, pick it up at your local Trader Joe, I do, or your local Benny's or Mariano's, or you yeah. might be in a city with a Ralph's or Kroger. You yeah, can find it there. You know what I'm saying. I definitely do the breweries and the and the binnies and the and the, uh, the the bottle shops and all that. But gee, I I was I just left Aldi because every Saturday Sunday it's time to re up on lunch, right? I, we got to buy because we make the kids lunches. And I was in the like I can't be in Aldi finna buy beer, but I was about to. Aldi low key had Daisy Cutter. They had uh, mm. a low a low crazy something or whatever. Uh, Revolution's yeah, yeah. Belgian Pale Ale with the dude on it. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. gee, I might buy some beer from Aldi right now. So, yeah, man. Amen. Kendrick Lamar. Uh, Let's do it. Mor- Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Um, so, what, Thursday night at yeah. 11 o'clock, that joint did not drop. And, it, and stuff was brand new, and I'm like, what's going on? It dropped and then they took it off. It dropped and then it went away. And then so, it came back like, later. right. So, I didn't see it at all, but I saw the other new joints and the, you know, the rap list, the rap playlist had Kendrick at the top mm-hmm. with the Die Hard joint and they wouldn't play. And I'm like, what's good? And then they just took it off. I'm like, dang. So, I'm chilling, doing some other stuff about 11 20. I check again. Oh, it's here. You know what I'm saying? I would just go, just hit play, just want to see how it was sounding. And I ended up listening to the whole thing, the whole hour and 15 minutes or whatever. And uh, it actually took longer than that because I was I was rewinding on a few tracks. Yes. I was rewinding on a few tracks. Um, I like it. How can I not like it? <laughs> you, know <what laughs> you can you like, can one hundred percent not like something, but go ahead. But um, I could not be a fan of something. One hundred percent. But this is probably the best album, um, because it is honest, is real, it's coming from one of the the most thought provoking artists of our time. Um, not just a rapper, like he. He's a, a full-blown, just full artist. Uh, he transcends rap. He has done, like I said, when we talked about the heart. Let me um, stop. You said the best album. What do you mean when you say the best album? What do you, of, of, of right now or his album? So what do you mean when you, because you said I'm the best album. I'm going to say the best. Did I say that? Yeah. Okay. I'm, just making, I'm just making sure. Good call. Good call. Okay. This All is right. the best album out right now. Got you. Okay, cool. Right now. Um. I'm a fan of Push. I'm a fan of Future. I'm a fan of other artists that have dropped, you know, this year that we've checked for. But this right now is something different. 
this is a rap album, but this is such a different rap album. Um, yes. He's raw in here. He's, you know, he went away for a while. Let me, let me read something, man. Um, you know, remember when he first uh, dropped the, um, when he first dropped the, the fact that he was, going to be coming out with new music and he just posted like a file folder. Yes. And in that, you know, it said that a lot of times, you know, I was reading that and he kind of gave clues to some of the things that he's talking about on the album. Yeah. Uh, Of course, none of us knew that. We just think this is Kendrick. Oh, snap. He's coming out with a new album. Mm -hmm. But he talks about, you know, I I'm on, I find myself in silence on hills. You know what I'm saying? And things like that. And, and you know, finding myself and things like that. You know, he's been in nature. He's been finding himself. He's praying been to trees and praying to flowers. Trees. Yes, yes. He's been, like, listening to God. He's been on a spiritual journey. And this is the results of that. The whole thing is a, is a therapy session. Like literally, it's a, it's a therapy session, and there are recurring themes in here. Um, you know, it's uh, dense, it's heavy, it's a lot of human conversation in here. It's not just beats and rhymes. It's conversation. It's uh, you know, things that we like to tap dance around. You know, in in between humans and between yeah. in families, um, you know, he's got the tap dancing sound throughout the whole. You know, at throughout. the end of, at the end of a lot of tracks, and he tells you at the end of "We Cry Together," stop tap dancing around the issue. Um, and then and then going back and hearing like the first time around, I'm like, okay, it is. How many it times is. have you listened? I've listened three times. Okay, me too. Like, okay, perfect. I've listened three times all the way through. Um, Whitney, his wife, is the, the I'm going to say, the main narration uh, on the first half, on the Big Steppers, and then on Mr. Morale is uh, Eckhart Tolle, who is a, I think he's a psychologist or something like that. I mm-hmm. think like some type of therapy psychology type of guy i is i thought it was on my phone but it is not up on my phone keep going i'll get it (laughs) but yeah so he's got the actual therapist on here also um he's got kodak black as a type of voice that you know is speaking here and there throughout the piece Mm -hmm. um I love how Kendrick kind of weaves things together. And by the end, a lot of it makes sense Yeah, that you just heard. And so in hearing it a couple of times, you know, we may not know just where to go. You know what I'm saying? That's like, in this old road. Oh. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's an intro. That's That intro is on both sides. And then at the end, before Mirror, right? And so the whole thing is is like it opens up, right? And he's mm. talking about how he's dealing, you know, grief, united in grief. And he's talking you, about his relationship. United in grief. Wonderful. How Go he ahead. deals with grief. We grieve different. But most of his grieving is monetary. You know what I'm saying? He's spending money on a bunch of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um mm. He his first example though he had sex with a chick you know what I'm saying and so by the third track worldwide steppers that's the first one where it's like ooh this is a this is a scathing ooh this is a a, a very rough listen right now you know what I'm saying this man is he over here he going hard I think it's his best rapping possibly on in I want to say any album but it's it is some of the best rapping that I've ever heard from Kendrick Lamar. Go ahead. Um I would agree with you. I would agree yeah. with you. Um I think that see he's been gone for so long that 
you know, he's been he's been without a phone. He's been off the grid. Yes. And so now, you know, as he's coming back, these this is the result of all of his thoughts. And he has thoughts about, you know, he he and he's an open book. That's the thing where he's just, you know, that's the thing that makes this transformative for him. He is making it an open book. This is who I am. If we're going to face this, if I'm going to face this, but, or before anyone else can say anything about me or anything like that, not that, it, not that that's even his concern. His concern is himself. And he's choosing me, right? Mm. He's choosing himself. But also at the beginning of uh, Mother I Sober, right? Mm-hmm. which is one of my favorite joints. Absolutely. Um, which is the culmination of everything you hear before it. It is. Absolutely. Um, he says, I'm just one man uh, standing on two words. Heal everybody. Absolutely. And so at the end of Mother I Sober, which is the last song, which is the or the last song before Mirror, which is his proclamation of I'm choosing me amongst all of this other nonsense out here. You know what I'm saying? He's he's Dan, I almost I, I almost I forgot my thought my train of thought. <laughs> but he's 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 Dan, I forgot my train of thought. It's cool. It's all good, <laughs> man. But the point is that you know he's this is his transformative oh yes transformation. He's come to a point where you know, he's standing on these two words, heal everybody, but he's trying to heal everyone through his own transformation. Yeah. There's some things that he talks about in this album that no artist has ever touched in this way. Um, and he don't let up. He does not let up. He does not give himself any type of grace. He goes in on himself, on the things that he sees, on his family. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a heavy one, man. Let me let me. I'm gonna pause you right there because I want I want I want to piggyback with what you're saying right there. Um, because I told you how I wanted to approach this from my end was give three big takeaways from the album, and then I want to give maybe Mm. three songs that I really like. So I'll pause you right there and I'll say one of my takeaways. I can't remember an album that focused this much on combination of trauma therapy healing and release the release Mm. point right very nice um and what i mean is that what you're saying is i I think this is maybe the heaviest or the most uh not self-centered but therapeutic from the standpoint of the self album i've heard in hip-hop we yeah. do hear artists agree. talk about I go to therapy, but that's that's one thing to say, oh, I go to therapy or we need therapy or whatever that may be and talking about trauma and all that. But he really walks it through again, you know, the trauma, therapy, healing and then release, which mother I sober is the culmination. This is the release. This is me talking about maybe the biggest point of trauma in my life, which obviously he's talking about sexual abuse and whatnot. And here I'm I'm releasing that. Um, Mother I Sober being their release. Um, and like you said, what's crazy is that the, at the beginning of the album, the first voice is saying, I hope you find a peace of mind, right? Mm. But in this lifetime. Exactly. But at the end of Mother I Sober, now it's saying, I bear my soul and now we're free. You know what I'm saying? I bear my soul and now we're free. Like, so mm. that being... Mm. That's the release, right? And what's dope about that is that his wife says, uh, you did it. You did it. You broke a generational curse. Gee. Because there's also another point in the album mm. that where, just to interject real quick, where yeah. he talks about how black families don't talk about these things. They don't talk about it. And so he, that's part of the generational curse that he's breaking. In exactly. black families, let's talk about it. Yeah, I, I'm it's right here for you. Every the, the whole world can hear it, but this is me transforming. Mm. You know what I'm saying? This is me. He and he passes it on to those that are willing to 
take it in. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's it's uh mother yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go let ahead. me let me also say uh, with that 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 part touched me so much and not to make it too personal but you know one of the things that my father my father and I spoke about my father on some songs before you know how he dealt with alcoholism for so long and one of the things he told me G, is that one of the reasons why I stopped is because my father and my grandfather you know he said that my father speaking about my grandfather and my great grandfather both were um super duper alcoholics right Mm-hmm. And he was like, I don't want to pass that to you. This shit got to stop with me. Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? So he's been sober now for 20, 30 years because he felt that if he continued, that trauma possibly could pass on to me and my sons. So when I heard that piece, I was just like, gee, it's so many points in the album where it was like, okay, I got to stop it. It makes you just consume it. Like, it's like, like you said, you had to rewind it or whatever the case may be. But let me give one more, another big takeaway. Um, we've talked about the goat stuff, right? Like, oh, greatest, greatest. I've recognized I can't do goat stuff. It's too subjective. You but know. here's what I will say about Kendrick at this point. He is the most intentional artist in hip hop. Um, nobody is as um, intentional when it comes to executing a theme for an album, mm-hmm. that being the subjects in combination with the sonics, interludes, and everything else mm-hmm. that brings the album together. Nobody does it like this. Um, album opens up. Tell them the truth. That's out the gate. Tell them the truth, right? Mm. And then he says, I've been going through something. And his was dope, right? I don't know, I don't know if people caught this yet, but he says it's been 1,855 days. Do you know the significance of that? The 1,855 days? This was I crazy. I don't. I was like, what is that? I'm like, well... His last album dropped in 2017. It's been five years. What's 365 times five? And that was 1,825. And I said, wait a minute. What, what's the date of the album? His last album dropped. <laughs> Hit me! His last, his last album dropped April 14th, 2017. This album dropped May 13th, 2022. That is 1,855 days. So this album dropped 1,855 days since damn. That's the that's the significance wow. of that. Wow. He, he was like, all right, hold on. Hey, when we drop in this joint? Uh uh-huh, Okay, I, let me calculate that real quick. G, intentional, Word. right? Um, All these themes, therapy and whatnot, healing trauma. And what's crazy is it's May. What's May? May is Mental Month Awareness Month right these ain't coincidences you know what i'm saying like i I, or at least i don't believe that these are coincidences like he's dropping this album during mental health awareness month right um this is not my favorite album sonically from him i agree but that doesn't mean a damn thing because i think the themes are so heavy that the sonics have to be you can't do mother eye sober over um anything else but what that beat is yeah and that beat is a drum that's light some pianos and that's it because the subject is too heavy for the instrumentation to get in the way of what needs to be said so i can't throw to your point last week i can't throw this on right you was talking about man i can't throw kendrick on sometime i gotta throw this on. i'm not gonna be able to throw this on but i'm not mad at it because this is his best rapping to this date to me on an album his best um yeah uh i do want to piggyback off a few things you said but Mm -hmm. i'm gonna go ahead and you know say what some of my favorite joints are let's go there yeah um man uh i think worldwide steppers really connected with me the first time (laughs) i heard it so i'm gonna have to say worldwide stepper um I'm trying to go through the rest of the album, but I know for a fact Worldwide Steppers and Mother I Sober are at the top of that list. Yes. Um, and so with that in mind, I'm gonna just start there. <laughs> well, let me can I stop you at Worldwide I like Steppers? a lot, I like a lot of the songs, but I'm gonna say Mother I Sober might be the my favorite song on the album. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Uh, but go ahead though. Go ahead. Um, 
The media is the new religion. Y'all killed the consciousness. Your jealousy is way too pretentious. You kill the oh, accomplishments. <laughs> Niggas real, kill freedom of speech. Everyone's sensitive. Man, if you're a real opinion, fuck around and leak, might as well send your will. The mm. industry has killed the creators. I'm the first to say to each exec, I'm saving your children. We can't negotiate. Mm. I called a couple of bodies myself, slid through my community. My last Christmas there in, uh, in Compton, hand out, a, hand out eulogies. Not because the rags in the park had red gradient, because the high blood pressure was <laughs> flooded in the in food catering. Bruh. Bruh. What? That's so real though, man. Like all this, man. I love I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. The man talked about cancel culture, man. I'm gonna say what I want to say. You know what I'm saying? This man said what he wanted to say. The man, man, uh uh auntie's diaries, faggot, faggot, faggot. That's something that that I've already been seeing among you know I've seen I've seen people say when well, why didn't nobody say nothing about him when he said that and people are actually tripping like double XL got a got a, a article going around right now that people are mad about Kodak Black being on the album word <laughs> you know what I'm saying and you know people are gonna have their opinions about the album. People are going to have opinions about albums in general. It's public. It's anybody can have their opinion. But at the end of the day, this is not, this is, this is an album for Kendrick, but at the same time, it's for the masses to also help. You know what I'm saying? This is a, a this is an exercise in healing not just himself yeah it's for everyone you know what i'm saying mother i sober is such a good song you know and then looking at it it's six minutes yeah yeah but it's got you know how you know one mic is 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 fire you know what i'm saying when we first heard Nas one mic Mm -hmm. You know, we were it is energizing to hear him start the way he start and then gain and then gain up that energy on how you know you know how one mic goes, right? Yeah, yeah. And Mother I Sober is the same feel where he's telling this story and in telling it, it's got certain different layers. The the story mm -hmm. is weaving, you know what I'm saying? But it weaves into everything that he's talked about yeah. throughout the album, you know what I'm saying? Um He's not only is he talking about things that he's talked about with the sex addiction and mm -hmm. things of that nature, right? But he's also telling new stories with his mom. You know what I'm saying? And the whole situation, like he's he's telling this, and towards the end, it's like he's building up this energy and releasing it all. Yeah, it's the release. It's the release. And in that is is it's 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 an album that's never been done before yeah yeah for sure um it's something that is completely new we've heard this type of stuff from like an Eminem even IDK we just talked about IDK talking about you know what I'm saying his situation yeah. but Never in, in this form where he's revealing things throughout the entire album. And it's for his release. Even the more R&B, like Die Hard and the uh, Purple Hearts, even these songs. He still divulges That's stuff on That's my joint. Purple Hearts is my... Purple, Purple Hearts is pretty dope. That's going to be Baby. one of them... <laughs> <laughs> Look, but I want I want to I want I don't want to harp too much on the the the, the landscape of uh, the media and whatnot. But to to kind of go back to what you're saying about people being offended, I'm happy he did speak because people people would be very shocked by what a Kendrick actually thought on some things. If they, if you put if 
forget the music. If you gave him a microphone and put him in an interview and asked him a question about this or that, people may be shocked about what Kendrick may say. You know what I'm saying? He's a right. complex cat, man. And he talks a lot on the album about also critical thinking and independent thinking, which to your point, right? Independent. Him talk. saying faggot, 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 and the people having an issue with that, right? That's a problem with what's going on right now, right? He is not saying the word to offend anyone. Right. There is a point within the story that he is bringing together to show how careless he used to use the word back then. Mm -hmm. And then he's drawing that into, and even at the end of it, he has, like he's saying, he had a conversation with his cousin. Like, yeah, you could say it if you let this white girl say, and then the song abruptly cuts off, right? right, right. All that is intentional but people mm -hmm. are focusing on the word that's why we're stupid now did you not you so you missed the point then you there's missed the of, point there's a lot of people that you know people you know people are saying that they fans of the of, of kendrick right and i'm still seeing and this mainly on twitter I saw the I saw the art I saw the double XL trash. I saw the double XL uh joint through Twitter and that people are calling the album mid the best song is the joint with Kodak Black. Oh, Why is Kodak Black on the album? Okay, here's my okay. He portrayed himself as this good guy rapper. Why would he have Kodak of all the rappers you could have got? Why Kodak? And the best song, and then on the other side, the best song on this mid album is Silent Hill with Kodak. Wow, a part of me feel like, yo, first of all, I need to delete Twitter, man. You Eli should. need to just get it, buy it, and delete it. Delete you know that shit because motherfuckers is dumb. But it's like, gee, like we were talking, you know, Danny was saying that the album was banging, right? We were talking with Danny. He was saying that the album was banging. The yeah. album is the album got joints. Yeah, but it's hard. Like in the in them early hours, first twenty four hours, and when it came out, it's hard to say that it was banging per se because still, of the content. It's still really not banging. Music. It's like, yeah, it's like, man. Do we say, I mean, at this point, I can sing along to some of the words, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, this not really like a sing-along no, joint. This is not, not like songs you remember, and like you about to be rapping these, you know, because this is his, this is, this is a different type of album. And Kendrick has distinguished himself, like I said, when we talked about the heart. Mm -hmm. He distinguished himself from these other rappers. He is not your regular run-of-the-mill rapper. Yeah. He has distinguished himself from the chains and the tattoos and the talking about, you know, what... Like, I like Push's album. Yeah. I like it. I did give it a hard time, but I do like Push. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. He's the he's the drug kingpin. He's a he's the cocaine cowboy out here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Is mad, you know, even future. Future is out here, um, you know, doing what future do. We know what right. future do, right? But future is not your savior. <laughs> Bro, okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Let, let, let's bring it back in some because I'm I want to give my other two favorites. Let's start there. Savior. And here's the thing. I'm giving three songs that are my favorite, but this shit can all change because this is me on day three of listening, right? Savior is also there for me. It's a, um, good, it's a good song. That, I think, is another one. You know, I, I, bro, hello, Cracker. I see niggas out here arguing about who's blacker, right? Bro, mm. Mons was out here really arguing. I'm going to leave that there. Even blacked out screens and called this solidarity. I got that in my notes. I'm meditating in silence. And y'all want to tell, like, I, I'm chilling. Where's, so, that's it. I'm telling you, he was paying attention to no name. I'm joking. Possibly though. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, 
but that's how that's how you say that about no name, but that's how everybody was. That's how where's people Kendrick be. at? Where Kendrick? Why he ain't saying nothing? Right. Well, he's a torn kid. Okay, I'm. I don't want to. I don't want to. Bro, but uh, also he a human. The same thing like Tyler was saying. Like y'all, y'all just saying stuff to just go with the group think. Y'all just saying stuff. Y'all don't know, man. Yeah, what yeah. you went to church because your mama went to church, not because you found it for yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that group think is no, there's no, there's no individual mind. And it's even worse on, cause you're literally living in an echo chamber online. Twitter is a Twitter. All these spaces are heavily, they're, they're communities where you find solidarity with people who make you feel comfortable because they share your same, you know, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Anyhow, um, but that, that's what he's talking about, though. but that's what he's talking about, though, right? That's why I said people, if you put a mic in front of him, people might be like, Gee, what you talking about, Kendrick? But anyhow, count me out, man. Session two breakthrough, right? This is the transition. That's this is time. it. This is where, because in the first half of the album, if you if you listen, he's reluctant to therapy, right? He's like, yeah. Real niggas don't need therapy. You know what I'm saying? And then he also said another point in the first half, you know, I don't need I don't need it, right? He's but this is the breakthrough, right? I care too much, want to share too much in my head too much. I shut down, I ain't there too much. I'm a complex soul. They laid me up, they broke me down. You know what I'm saying? Like he's going through these things, and you know, but I love when they count, bruh. This time around, I trust myself. I be trying to please everybody mm. but myself. You know what I'm saying? Cram. Bro, Crown is special. Crown is good, man. Crown is another one with no drums. We just like just listen, just listen, yeah. man. Just listen, yeah. Just listen. Um, what's some of your other ones? And we can we, we can get out of there. What's some of your other ones? I don't want to. Yeah. Look, man. I like United in Grief. As a matter of fact, like okay. I really like how it comes on. Okay. I really like how it comes on. Um. When he told the story on Father Time, and mm-hmm. I really like Sampha. I really like Sampha. Yeah. Um, but when he told the story on Father Time, it took me like the, the second or third listen to realize that the story is all about playing basketball with his father. You know what I'm saying? And so he's telling this, he's telling this story through them playing basketball, you know what I'm saying? Even wake up in the morning, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Um, absolutely. No chaser, neat, no chaser, you know what I'm saying? Um, It's, it's, uh, that's a heavy one. But, you know, he bring it back around to, it's therapeutic for him, and then he puts it on rap. He know what that look like. Mm-hmm. He know what that looked like. Let's give these women a break. Um, I like I like the rich interlude. I like both interludes. I think Kodak actually got off a little bit. Man, you know what I'm saying? Like I appreciated his voice. I appreciated his voice. He wasn't like super rapping, but he does what he did. What Kodak listen. does, and his voice is what like it's a lot of rappers out here whose voice is gold. Listen, you know listen, listen, listen. I think that speaking to intentionality a minute ago and why Kodak Black is here, two juxtapositions, Mr. Morale and the big stepper, right? Like morality. And then when people say they're a bit, I'm a big stepper. What are they saying? I flex. I could travel. I got money, all that. Right. I think that people in hip hop purist or people who are, real or whatever would want to just dismiss a kodak black right hmm. he's brash he is you know at times he, wild he and out. right yeah. but that is i think that represents the big step on the album and i think it's so fire that that kendrick has him here because regardless of how you feel he's still a part of the culture and you cannot just you know because sometimes kendrick himself will flex you know and that's the thing about duality hmm. That's the point. The album is a lot of duality within the album. You know, the yin and yang of life, you know, the righteousness and ratchetness to take from Charlemagne. You know what I'm saying? The God, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's dope that Kodak is on here for that reason. You know what I'm saying? It makes sense. Mm-hmm. This man is the greatest rapper of all time, Kendrick Lamar. 
go ahead, man. see. Go ahead. Do your thing. Do your thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I we can't we can't not talk not talk about this song. But I was walking. Um, I was walking a dog earlier today, mm-hmm. and I passed and uh, I passed uh, this dude on his porch. You know, what I'm saying with his dog. He was just out there chilling, but he was an older person, and I felt. It was important to turn it, turn down my music. I had to yeah. turn down my music uh, because we cry together was on at the time. Yeah, and I'm like, uh, normally I just let whatever play, but I'm like, this one is a bit much. You know what I'm saying? And the first time I heard it, it's like, my God, this is shocking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. even at the like. In the first stages of the album, you know, you got Worldwide Steppers on the same side as We Cry Together and and Father Time and these songs. I'm like, man, this is a this is a uh this is an interesting listen, man. This is this is this is what I got to look forward to towards the like what else could be after we cry together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. And it's so funny to me is and ironic that the song is called We Cry Together. You know what I'm saying? Because they both in pain. Mm-hmm. And if you've heard the song, you know what it is. But they both in pain. Yeah. They both in pain. Yeah. But they just shouting at each other. And that's how it be. That's how it be. It started with this is how the world sounds. Wow. Wow. That was a that was that's a rough listen. Shout out to Taylor Page, uh yes. the actress. The actress from um uh from Zola. I, I know that's the latest thing. She was in my Rainey's bottom, you know what I'm saying? A few other things, but uh, which one was she in there? Because that's my joint. Uh my Rainey's bottom. She was the chick that, that was uh, with. She was that the Chadwick was like trying to holler at. Oh, she fine. Hey, yeah, Taylor, yeah, what's that's going Taylor on? Page, okay. yeah. So uh, but yeah, um, shout out the Alchemist, uh, who produced that joint. Um, but yeah, that 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 song is so scathing, so look, my god, to that, your point, sheesh. I, I I typically listen to anything with my kids in the car, and both times when that song was going to come on, I I I fast forwarded it, or I went to the next song because it's not a way I can explain that to them. They're not at that point in life where I can be like, "Okay, guys, this is why this song is this way." It just wouldn't make sense to my eleven and nine year old. So yeah, I, I feel you. I haven't, but yeah. look, my wife though, G, she don't my wife is not even like a big fan of rap and i she on friday she texts me oh my god uh we cry together so good i'm like dang g you really you feeling that joy <laughs> so yeah man and, you yeah. Know, and it's like you know kendrick is such an artist man he's like man who am i gonna get to say this part because you know he wrote it right. you know what i'm saying but it's like who, who can i get to do this part and he was smart to get not a rapper, but an actress, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, to perform this. They needed the, the, mo- the emotions and everything needed to be there. Yeah, because then moments, there's moments that I'm like, I wonder if he directed her to like almost cry in certain areas. Yeah. Because there are certain areas of the song where she, it sounds like she almost about to cry. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, dang, man, this is this is such a visceral. My God, this song is. Bro, it reminded me so much of. And again, I was I was teasing a bit, but I mean, it to me, it really is RZA esque from the standpoint of the production, and it also reminds me of something that Ghost would do. This is something oh, I, I could. Uh, it's so wooish. It just and reminds- then Ghost is on the next song, right? But but shout out shout out Bobby Digital man because he was the first with domestic violence man yeah you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah but um but yeah man um we cry so, together um 
I really like Crown. Silent Hill is just hard. You know what I'm saying? That's a hard joint. Push the niggas up like who? <laughs> you niggas up, you like who? <laughs> um, uh, Baby King on the Savior interlude. <laughs> this man really got off, G. Hey man, Baby King got off. He said, "Have you ever seen your mama strung out while you study division? Your uncle ever stole from you?" Day after Christmas, seen both of those in them county jail visits. He say, he say, he say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Grandma shoe niggas blood on the highway. This man really saw this stuff, G. I'm good, <laughs> love. I'm good, love. He say, my uncle would tell me the things in the movies could only be magic. This year I did 43 shows and took it all home to buy him a casket. Casket. Yeah, man. That's he a really, look, he 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 really he he really painted a picture, man. And Throughout look his entire verse, he painted a picture. He painted a picture. And baby came, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to win it when I, uh, 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 you know what I'm saying? He got those elements in there where he's like, he uses his voice well. You know what I'm saying? I feel like Kendrick taught him well. Look, <laughs> you know what and what's, what's fire is that I, I think that he's there on purpose as the, not the younger Kendrick, but like he inserts, you know, the that part and, and what he's talking about. But the beginning of Savior interlude is your man again, Eckhart Tolle talking about yeah. like this song here transitions to the childhood trauma and the healing and the release right mm -hmm. uh eckert told talks about you know um if you let past trauma dictate your life right like that's like that's the beginning of that song and then we get baby keem coming in with all this dang i said that it's a it's an yeah. aha moment right there yeah. baby keem comes in talking about all this fucking childhood trauma right 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 yeah, man. Um, Damn, I ain't even peep game. That's crazy. Yeah, man. It's it's a it's so this is the last thing I'm gonna say, man. Yeah, I said me, all yeah. I can say about the album. Me too. Yep, go ahead. Um Kendrick Lamar is probably in my top five. But he is an artist, and I think I said this before, but he is an artist that it is hard to just put an album on and just vibe to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but his mm -hmm. talent is undeniable. He has a talent that is undeniable, even though, for me, his music... You know, before before his album came out, I'm going back and listening to Section 80 and to Pimple Butterfly and Damn and all of these joints, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the mind that came up with, you know, um, Good Kid, Mad City, and to tell the story the like that, you know, um, he's he's his albums have to be digested in a different way from other albums for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can't just throw it on. No, you cannot. This is like, I'm about to sit down and watch a movie. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Like, for sure. This is like, I'm about to, I'm intentionally got to Like I got a long drive and I'm going to like vibe out to an album. Mm -hmm. Cause I have to listen to it. This ain't something like the only album I could think of that I could do that with. I could do that with Section 80. You know what I'm saying? That's more of a general like songs. I did some songs. They getting put on this album. But Good Kid, Mad City, Damn, To Pimp and Butterfly, all them songs are meant to be where they are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And with Damn... They meant to be where they are frontwards and backwards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's intentional like that, like you were saying. He is intentional what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And man, he's he's definitely up there for me. 
but I always find myself, I, I can't just go to his album and just throw it on. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's where, I mean, it's hard to do that with Kendrick. For me, yeah. it's hard to do that. But he's definitely, he got to be, he, I can't ignore him and say, so because of those reasons, I don't listen to him as much as I may do a Ghostface right. or MF Doom. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, most artists do songs. They're going to cut some songs. They're going to keep these songs. This the album. This is a fire collection of songs. Right. Kendrick puts, weaves these songs together mm -hmm. and thinks about what song is going to come after what, you know, and it's a different, it's a different experience. I can't just throw this joint on, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, sometimes hearing certain songs outside of the album, it don't really sound as good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you know, that was my issue with swimming pools mm -hmm. when it first dropped. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. He, okay. He's he's I think it's a good album. I don't know where I would rank it as far as uh not as doing far, it. as far as far as his albums are concerned. Still, no. I don't know. I don't know where I would rank it yet. You know what I'm saying? But look, I still have to digest the album even more. I'm on my third listen, and I, I right now I'm I'm not even thinking about where I'm gonna put it because I'm still catching certain things and I'm still enjoying the album. And I'm also somebody I don't really I had put it down after Friday and then I came back to it yesterday evening because I really I'd be I, I'll listen to something if I really like it a lot, but I don't be really it's so much I listen to so much shit that it just be like a lot of other things I'd be trying to check out. Um, but I'm gonna come back to this a couple more times. I don't know where I'm gonna put it within his catalog, yeah. but right now I'm really feeling it. Um, yeah, man. That's what it is. Um, next time y'all see us, we'll be for people who check for us. Hey man, I wouldn't be mad if he didn't do any interviews, man. I wouldn't even be yeah, mad. Yeah, no, no. Let the art be the art. I don't need Let to see the any art interview. be the art. Like, I feel like him not doing interviews is what even got him to that point of doing the album. Yeah. Nobody should have anything to say. Like, it's like, let me I'm gonna put this out, I'm gonna do a tour, and I said all I need to say about these. I might hit what that else up. you need to ask me? I might hit that up. It's I here I might, already. I might have to see what that's, that joint is about, man. Uh, whenever his he does his Somebody tour. Somebody asked me if I was going to the tour, man. So I, I think I'm going to have to do that. Um, <laughs> but listen, listen. 2020, we did a thing called Mixtape May. Oh, yeah. Um, we will be back this year with Mixtape May. Um, I don't want to allude to anything, but I'll just say that if you are a fan of Lil Wayne, Mm. You should check out the next mixtape May series with myself, Kamal, and DJ mm. Sparks. DJ Sparks. Uh, if you are a fan of uh, some some old Wale mixtapes, if you are a fan of some stuff they got two chains popping, like uh, True Religion, you should you should definitely check out the next Ooh. couple of joints. We are gonna have some fun, beers and bars, man. Peace.